Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectrotron, and today I've got a quick one for you. We are going to learn how to set up an infinite floor look inside of Redshift, because if you notice inside of Cinema 4D, underneath the physical or standard renderer, we have this really nice option here that's called floor, and it creates this nice infinite floor for us. Well, we don't have that in Redshift, but what we can do is create an infinite floor look using a psych wall just like you do in real life. So we're going to go to our editor and go back to Redshift real quick. And you can see here that we actually have a floor that goes and then it curls up into our wall. So the way to make this work is very simple. It's really easy to create. And all you need to do is figure out where to place it and where to place your subject because you want to be able to light your subject on its own as if there is no psych wall there. And then you want to be able to light your psych wall on its own as well because that is going to be the key to blending these two things together. So before we make this, it's important to note that you can do this even with a dome light, you can have your dome light, but if we do a dome light only, you'll see we have, you know, it's obviously, it's kind of dark back here because our dome light is casting a shadow and we don't have that exact infinite floor look, but it's not bad, honestly, but all we need to do is just add a couple lights and now we have this really nice infinite floor and we still have the lighting of that dome light on our subject. It's just exactly what I'm talking about. So you can do a dome light or you can do studio lights, however you want to create this look. You can 100% control everything and the look of this separately from your backlight, which is exactly what we want. So in the real world, when you create a psych wall or you want to do an infinite white floor and stuff like that, or I mean, it's all green screen now, but you can still do it practically with a white psych wall. And we used to have one and basically you just have lights that are dedicated to lighting the psych wall evenly and smoothly. And then you have your lights on your subject and stuff. So let's go ahead and create this real quick. Firstly, I want to say thank you guys so much for the support. You guys have been super supportive over the last month or so since I've been pumping out a lot more content. I've got a lot more subscribers. And to each of you and everybody that got my Gumroad downloads and free materials, check the links below to see those. But thank you guys again for all the support. It really means a lot and it means a lot for the growth of this channel and, and me. This is all I do. So um, it really helps support me and my, my life, uh, my family. So thank you again. I uh, just really appreciate it, you guys. Um, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell if you you're like what you see, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. There are a couple ways to make a psych wall. The easiest way is just to create a plane and we're just gonna scale that up by hitting T and scaling that up. Then we're gonna hit C to make that editable. Grab the edge tool, double click the back here, hit E for the move tool, hold control, and that's gonna make a copy of that and that's gonna instantly draw those polygons for us so then we can hold shift and we can go up by about 200 and then let go and then let go and do again and then repeat and repeat. And once you get up a few ways, well, once you go up a few ways, really you can just, once you get a little, once you get, once you've done that a couple times, if you really want to, you can just hold control and just slam it up to the top. But yeah. So we're just going to keep doing that. You can be a little less accurate as you get further away. Just make sure you go straight up with it. Okay, so we're going to make sure we get to the tippy top there. So now we have this nice right angle and all we need to do is hold alt and click subdivision surface and we've created this really smooth arc here. And really we want this to be a tiny bit smoother. So we're going to go ahead and turn this up to three. And so now what we can do is just hit T and just scale this up and that creates a very smooth, nice ramp here. If you look at this right now in our interview, you can see it's very clear that there is a ball here and it fades into our floor, which is better than when it was a sharp line here. You can see how that curve really affects that. We can turn this off and you can see how without that subdivision surface, we are getting a perfectly straight line and with it, we're getting a nice smooth fall off, which is exactly what we want. And so we're going to use lighting to blend this together. So I'm going to set up an object and a scene really quickly. So here is the exact same type of psych wall. I've built it the exact same way. And I've just added my subjects here. And we take a look at this. You can see there's a really good amount of distance between my subject and my psych wall. This is the back wall. 
So we want to make sure that we have a really nice bit of distance between these two objects because we want these lights to be able to light our subject or our dome light, whatever, that did not be affected by our back wall and we don't want our back wall to be affected by our front wall. So if we take a look at this right now, without any backlights, we only have lights lighting our subjects. You see we have this dark back wall. So all we need to do, let me bring this over here. All we need to do is middle mouse click and we want to create an area light. And we want to move this back over out of the way. And we're gonna just grab this area light, hit E. I'm gonna slide it up down here, hit R to rotate it. We're gonna rotate it about 85 degrees. Which is so, so it's like almost 90 degrees facing straight down. And we want to lift that up just out of our scene a little bit. We want it to be above the top of where we can see our psych wall. And then we're going to stretch that out the length of this and then the width of this big gap as best we can. And you can see we've got this sharp line here and that is because our light is actually not quite out of frame enough. So we're just gonna pull that up a bit and we're gonna rotate that just a bit more because we really don't want it to light our objects. We just want it to light the background here. And you can see already that's created this really nice infinite floor look, but it's just super blown out. But you can tell there's no, you can't tell that there's a cycle back there. So this is kind of a cool look if you wanna do that. But all I need to do is we can label this you know, back psych wall. Just label this, we can just label this backlight. And what we can do is we can now just bring that intensity down until we have this nice blend of exactly what we want. So really, really simple. The key to this and having this work is you wanna make sure you have a matte material because if you come in here and we have this matte material that's actually shiny, can affect that yeah you're gonna get reflections and stuff in these curves of that psych wall and i'm not saying you can't do it it's possible but if you're going to use a reflective floor i would recommend doing something with just having light fall off rather than a dark background i mean rather than a psych wall or just pull your psych wall far enough back that it's not getting that backlight on it at all So you have more of a natural fall off. But it's simply possible. Obviously you need to look out for reflections and stuff and that's gonna be your you know, biggest enemy for this. You can blur that out a little bit. But yeah. Yeah, it is possible to do a backlight with this. I mean, obviously we can just figure out which light this is and we just need to move that one. It's probably that one right there. So maybe we can just edge that over a bit. Off screen, this is just what we would do in the real world. Move it off screen and then turn it back up. So we still get the lighting effect but we don't want that reflection. There we go. So you could definitely do it that way if you wanted to. So you still have sort of a fall off, but it's always gonna be. Yeah, so there you go, that works. You can have a reflective floor and a fall off here without any real issues. You're just gonna have to be a lot more careful with where you place your lights, which is the same as if you're filming anything with you know any kind of reflective surface. But the key again is going to be just having that nice smooth curve and then having the distance between your subject and your wall to be able to light that whole area on its own nice and even with one big area light and then be able to light your subject and stuff separately so you want to make sure you have that and if you know we can come in here and make this black and you can see that you're going to see those reflections a lot more when you have a black or a dark shiny material. So if you're relying on that shininess, this is where it's probably gonna be better for you just to let your light fall off. If you're gonna do a black surface, just do a plane and let it fall off into the distance with the light rather than doing a wall. But if you're gonna do a color, um, you can definitely use 
But if you're gonna do a color, you can definitely use a psych wall if you want. But again, I recommend most infinite floor looks are probably going to be with a roughness value all the way up to one. Bring that light back in now. Pretty cool. So hopefully that was helpful. Now if you say, okay, well that's cool. Well, I want to make, I want to figure out how to make my objects and have the shadows, but I don't want to build a psych wall. I just want to literally have them be cut out and put them on a solid color so I don't have to worry about that gradient or anything. And that is a different method. And if you want to learn how to do that, let me know in the comments below and I can show you how to do uh, that kind of matte shadow type look and alpha channels and all that. But this should be a nice, simple way for you to be able to create that infinite floor look. The key is just going to be balancing this backlight to the amount that you want to create that look. So the brighter it gets, that's a really nice, clean fall off. And it's all going to depend on the colors of your shapes. Basically, the main thing you want is you want to be able to see your subject. You don't want to get back to and your subject to be so flatly lit that it looks the same as the backdrop because we do want our backdrop to be nice and flatly lit. We have some nice backlights and stuff and some keys creating some edges and some highlights on here and we have some shadowy parts just to give it that contrast between the background. Again, you can slide this down. If you go all the way down, you can see how we kind of have a, a infinite floor, but it's really just a fall off to nothingness. But that's what I would do if I was doing a dark reflective floor. But we can bring this up and create a really nice look here. And I'm actually using the RT render engine and I'm pretty pleased with how well it is working. So I'm trying to use it a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. I think that created a really nice, clean look. So, a really nice, clean, infinite floor look. Now, if you wanted to do a camera angle, what you could do is just bend this back psych to create a C shape out of it. And that way you can like rotate around your subject a little bit and just have a nice, nice curving psych wall. That way you don't have to worry about revealing the edges or anything. Also, just make sure your backlight is above the frame because when you bring it down into your frame, you're obviously going to get that sharp fall off where that light is. So you should bring it up. But if you bring it up so high, you're going to start lighting your objects as well. So you want to you want to find that balance between being out of frame and not being so far out that it's not lighting your scene and lighting your subject instead. So there you go. Infinite floor. Again, if you want to learn more into creating studio lighting setups and everything, be sure to ring that bell and notifications because the Redshift Lighting Camera and Render Masterclass is coming out very soon. And some Skillshare courses as well. Both of those will all go in depth into creating the art style and the concept of how to light your scene to get it to look like you want it to look with a very practical real world approach to it as well as just the really nice benefit of being able to lug lights around super easily inside of Cinema 4D. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.